Welcome everyone to another MyaSound webinar. Today will be the premiere of a series of Constellation-related webinars. Very much looking forward to it, but I cannot do this alone, and that means that we have a co-host today, John Pello, MyerSound's Project Director for Constellation. Yes, hi. Thank you, thank you. Happy that you're here. Uh, you brought a guest. I did indeed. I brought a guest, um, someone we worked with very closely for some years. He's a, uh, not only a good colleague, but a personal friend. He is Anders Jorgensen from Stormborg in Denmark, and Anders um, has been around quite a long time in the business, and we've done some really interesting projects together. I think you're going to find this quite interesting. Excellent. Um, Anders, how's the transmission? Can you hear us? I can hear you. Can you hear me? And yes, sir. And, and that you. means that um, I will stop sharing. John, as they say, uh, take it away. Thank you very much, Merlin. Hi, everybody. Um, my name's John Pello. Just to quickly introduce myself for those of you that don't know me, I've been uh, with Maya since 2006 when we started the Constellation Venture. And uh, prior to that, I was associated with the company from 1985, which is 35 years ago. I was uh, mixing uh, sound for Luciano Pavarotti and later on the three tenors. And almost throughout that time, we used Maya sound equipment to mix the, those shows. And um, Prior to that, I was a recording engineer in the classical music business for Decca London Records, and um, that gave me a sort of background that led me to where I am now, because um, all of our classical music recordings were made in really very good acoustic spaces. They had to be, otherwise no one wanted to buy them or perform in them. So anyway, uh, I'm going to be talking uh, today um, uh, about... Um, a general introduction to Constellation because this is the first of three uh, webinars that we're doing. Next week, I'm going to be doing one on large symphonic venues. And uh, the week after that, my colleague Pierre Germain will be uh, doing a, a, a webinar on smaller and medium sized multi purpose venues. So, without further ado, let's get into what we're going to be talking about today Constellation for Education and Business. Now, I'm going to tell you how this all started. This is the ASB Theatre in Auckland, in New Zealand. And in the 90s, early 1990s, soon after this theatre was built, due to construction and budget constraints, the volume of the building was reduced and this inevitably compromised the acoustics, attracting very negative media attention. Uh, a New Zealand undergraduate, Mark Paletti, became interested in solving this problem uh, using mathematics and digital electronics. He believed it might be possible to increase the reverberation time by distributing loudspeakers and microphones throughout the stage and auditorium. A digital backbone would then be necessary to capture, process, and return entirely natural sounding energy to the hall using linear and scientifically defined principles. Mark was correct and his efforts were rewarded with a PhD. The VRS algorithm he created was initially licensed to the Canadian company LCS and now forms the foundation of Maya Sound's Constellation Systems. The company acquired the rights to the technology in 2005 and as of 2020, there are over 140 Constellation Systems installed worldwide. And funnily enough, as part of a substantial renovation, Constellation was installed in the ASB Theatre in 2012, finally solving the problems of the hall's deficient acoustics. So what is Constellation? Well, it's the name of Maya Sound's room acoustics technology. Well, that might seem obvious, but there's lots of other things you need to know about it. Equipment includes microphones, our Dimitri digital audio platform, and Maya Sound's active loudspeakers. QStation is the name of our software operating system. It allows us to calibrate, tune, and control Constellation. Calibration and tuning is performed by Maya Sound experts as part of any Constellation package. Constellation is an interactive system with simple, user-friendly controls. Systems are designed by qualified experts in acoustic and music. Adjustments can be made instantly to suit different applications and retuning and system expansion can take place to accommodate new acoustic requirements. Constellation is designed to exacting scientific principles. All components are strictly linear and designed for very low distortion. The system is not time variant. This is very important. 
Therefore, the performance of the system could be measured and verified using the same technique as physical spaces. That isn't true of all acoustic systems, and uh, the lack of time variance is very critical to the good performance of Constellation. The system, in principle, could do many things, acoustic for multi-purpose venues, theatres and concert halls, adaptable venues that can change shape, restaurants, churches, outdoor concerts, lecture theatres and education, business meeting rooms and auditoria. Let's take a quick look at the equipment used in Constellation. One of the latest additions to our catalogue is the UP4 Slim. It's a slim down a digital version of the original UP4 XP. And I have to say, it's a great loudspeaker. It sounds amazing for its size. The MM4 XP has been around a little while, but it's a very useful tool for Constellation. The Ashby series are our new ceiling loudspeakers. They're uh, really beautiful. They've got a very even coverage pattern, thanks to the fact that they're dual concentric. The, there's a five inch and an eight inch version. This is the Ashby 8C. The Ultra X20 is our latest loudspeaker that we've just released. And that comes in different coverage patterns, which is ideal for Constellation. We're going to be using a lot of those in future designs. No question of that. And for bigger systems, we have the Ultra X40 and the X42. The X42 is a control coverage version of the X40. This was released as a replacement for the UPA, and it's already got a very big following amongst our customers. The USW112P is our compact subwoofer, and slightly less compact, but a little wider frequency band is the USW210P. These are very narrow, these subwoofers, so they fit easily into tight spaces. The system is controlled on our Dimitri digital audio platform. It's a 96 kilohertz uh, sampling, 64-bit floating point internal arithmetic and 24-bit word depth. And it's a very, very good system. You can have a massive constellation system and the latency from one end to the other is no more than three milliseconds. So we're, we're very happy about that. Mac3D is our latest design tool and you can see here is um, a, a space that we've designed. It's quite a large space. And those little yellow dots you can see up there are Ultra X40 loudspeakers. And you can see the red area is the coverage pattern of those loudspeakers when running together. And here you can see UPQ loudspeakers overhead the auditorium. And you can see the coverage pattern for those. So a MAP3D will become an increasingly important tool for uh, designs of every kind in my sound, not just PA system, but also Constellation as well. Dimitri hosts our QStation software suite that controls Constellation, and any of you that are interested in learning more about that can do so. There's a, a lot of information available about it. Now, let's look at why we need Constellation. It might seem obvious, but in fact, there's so many different types of uh, use of rooms, you know, everything from cinema to pipe organs and chorus. And obviously for cinema, we need a very low reverberation time, as low as 0.4 seconds. Theatrical shows use amplification and typically need an RT of one second or less. Classical concert halls, such as this one in Berlin, the Concert House in Berlin, uh, have a 2.2 second reverberation time. And some churches have a very long reverberation time, 2.5 seconds or more. But the problem with the very reverberant spaces, of course, is that the intelligibility decreases the more reverberant it becomes. And so we need to tailor venues to have a low reverberation time. We then install Constellation and using the uh, system, we can increase the reverberation time to suit different things. So that in the afternoon, we can have a drama event at 0.8 seconds, and in the evening, we can have a choral event with two and a half seconds of reverb. It's as easy as pressing a button. Let's look quickly at the uh, necessary communication paths that we need to fill in order for this to work. Obviously, uh, like all good natural acoustics, the performers need to be heard by the audience. That's really important. Funnily enough, it's very nice if the performers can hear the audience as well, because when the audience applause, it's great if they get some feedback. 
performers to performers. Uh, of course, they need to hear each other on a big stage, an orchestra or, or a big group of musicians need to be able to hear one another. And lastly, the audience need to hear one another. So those things are really important too. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit about early decay time. Early decay time is the time it takes for sound to decay 10 dB from when you make any kind of sound. And every room has an early decay time and it has a, a reverberation time, which is normally uh, stated as T60. Now, if the early decay time is very much shorter, uh, in the top picture, you can see this. If the early decay time is very much shorter than the uh, T60 time, then you can't really hear the reverberation. You only hear it at the end of a huge musical event, but during running music or running events of any kind, you don't actually hear the acoustics operating. But Constellation has many channels. And by doing this, we're able to create high EDT that matches T60 or very nearly matches T60. And this gives us full envelopment so that if you go onto the stage and you play a simple violin string or you make a huge orchestral tutti, whatever you do, you could always hear the system. I'm now going to quickly go over the desired preferred uh, reverberation times for Constellation. This is assuming uh, a venue volume of 10,000 cubic meters. 1.07 seconds would be ideal for Constellation. On the other hand, 1.35 seconds is still fine and we can go beyond that. But for maximum versatility, the lower reverberation time is better because it enables you to do those rock concerts and all those things people love to do now with their PA systems and they'll still sound great with the constellation switched off. For voice diff systems, and Andrew's going to be talking about voice diff later on, we have a very strict rule of 3,000 cubic meters maximum size for any room and the reverberation time that we need for voice diff is very much lower. It's 0.38 for a 1,000 cubic meters room, and that might go up to 0.5 seconds, but we wouldn't want it to go any further. So we're quite strict with our rules for constellation. And you can see that as the room gets bigger, we've got greater tolerance that we can accept. Now, how we typically design a constellation system in a multi-purpose room, let's imagine this is a, a multi-purpose venue. We put microphones over the stage. We put them close to the musicians within five meters of the floor, if we can possibly get it like that. So we get the early energy from the performers and over the auditorium, we put microphones, but they are high above the auditorium so that they pick up just reverberant energy. We're not interested in picking up direct energy on those smaller mics over the auditorium. We then have to return the energy into the space. We're doing so here with a lot of UP4 Slim loudspeakers. And we're going to do the same on the stage with X20 loudspeakers. And I'm now going to put some Ashby loudspeakers over the top of the stage. And here we have some X20s again to form a roof over, over the stage and the auditorium. So we've enveloped the entire room with loudspeakers and lastly we surround the building with subwoofers so that we can actually change the bass ratio of the of this sound. The Alexa Concert Hall in Tallinn was put in some years ago but I always show this picture because this particular room has big under balcony systems as well as Constellation and I should point out that the room was designed for Constellation. The under balcony systems actually provide lovely acoustic sound and I believe Anders mentioned this that we were there recently and they mentioned that if they'd have built the room with a larger volume in order to get round not having to have constellation it would have cost an additional five million euros and they didn't want to do that and in any case they just still had acoustic problems under the balcony because under balconies don't sound great in any halls. We have microphones under the balconies and they're great at actually capturing the sound of people under the balcony. We process it and return the energy back into the space to make it feel natural. Now, last year we were out in Jakarta tuning this theatre, the uh, Jakarta International Theatre, 
It's two and a half thousand seats. It's very big. And I'm going to be talking more about music venues next week. But I just wanted to give you a taster of some of the venues. This particular room has a 1.3 second reverberation time, which is great for a room of this size because it's enormous. And we have a full constellation system. And what was nice was at the opening event there, Yo-Yo Ma played a solo cello recital on the huge stage. And it wouldn't have worked in any kind of physical acoustic, but using constellation, everyone was able to hear well. We know that. Here's a little one we did in Moss just recently. It's a lovely system. It sounds great. And it's using a lot of MM4 loudspeakers uh, laterally, and it uses UP4 slims overhead. Now, going from Moss, which is a 400-seat venue, to the other end of the uh, scale is this room in Caracas, Teatro Teresa Carreno. It's massive, and it's 34 metres wide, but using Constellation technology, we can actually get early reflections into the centre of the room before they would naturally get there. We do this by clever mathematics and using special loudspeakers that are able to shoot energy into the centre of the room and not be heard by the people at the edge of the room. This room would never function well acoustically normally, but we're able to fix this problem using constellation. And you can imagine this is a 26 metre wide stage and people can be heard from 40 metres upstage in the pit and in the auditorium. Uh, and for the same reason that people in the pit can be heard by performers 40 metres upstage. So everyone can communicate really well, thanks to this system. We've done some crazy things with Constellation. This is one of the craziest um, Star Wars in concert. We put a, a Constellation system on the stage to give the performers a better environment to work in. And it was so successful. The Royal Philharmonic Orchestra loved it so much that they bought a system and toured with it and did 120 shows around the world with Constellation as part of the stage system to give the performers a better acoustic. Constellation has been used for a long time in Vegas shows, Cirque du Soleil shows. It's considered to be compulsory for Cirque shows for audience enhancement so that the audience, when they applaud and all the rest of it, they feel they're in a lovely big open space. Constellations used for research. This is McMaster Live Lab in Hamilton, Ontario, and they're doing all sorts of interesting things. They're experimenting, measuring people's brain activity and changing the acoustic of the space to see how that influences their enjoyment of music. And they've come up with some really revealing information about how we need good acoustics in order to enjoy the musical experience. Here's something very different, a restaurant. We have done quite a few restaurants now in the Constellation. The idea of these systems is that we use it to reduce the acoustic focus. So just like with a camera, you can use a very wide aperture and have a very low depth of field. So that only the subject in focus is clear. Uh, we can do the same thing with acoustics. So we actually make the surroundings diffuse so that you don't hear conversations on the next table. You're not disturbed by people talking uh, some distance away from you. And the idea is that you can have a meal in privacy. We can't reduce the level of the noise. We don't do noise cancellation, but we certainly do acoustic focus, which is really effective. This is Logomo in Finland. It's a multi-purpose venue that hosts classical music, or it can host if we can push the Tribune back, it's 160 tons. We can host a slightly larger events. They can do opera. And lastly, they can do big rock concerts. They can seat, uh, accommodate up to 3,500 people. This has a full constellation system. And of course, it took three different calibrations in order to make this work. Here's the control uh, system for this. So it's very simple. You've got small, medium, and large hall size. You've got five different stage configurations, you've got four reverberation times, and you've got strength and warmth settings. Strength is a very important metric of acoustics, and that's why we need a strong EDT, because without a strong early decay time, you cannot have a strong system that gives a really strong sound signature. 
there's a picture of the Logamo Tribune. This is Valley Presbyterian Church, one of our most recent uh, churches. We've done a number of churches in the United States, and we're hopefully going to do one in Europe fairly soon. And this is a recording studio, the Tamil Place Research Institute in San Rafael, California. And I'm going to close by showing one of my favourite projects that we've done with Constellation. It's an outdoor constellation system. You can see the ballet bars, as we like to call them, which are full of Maya sound loudspeakers. And we capture sound from inside the New World Symphony Centre in Miami, Florida. We have microphones distributed throughout this building. And so when maestro Michael Tilson Thomas gives concerts, we capture the sound and we ship it out into the park. They have four huge barcode projectors that they project the images onto the back of the concert hall with. And you can just see my head there during the tuning at the bottom of the screen. And this is the only quote I'm going to show you. And then I'm going to hand over to Anders. But it's great that Anthony Tomasini, who's one of the biggest music critics of amplified sound, he can't stand it. Uh, to say something so complimentary about Constellation was very nice. So I'm now going to stop my screen sharing and I'm going to pass over to my good friend, Anders. Anders. Yes, thanks, John. Thanks. It's always striking me how many systems that actually are out there. I mean, 140, that's enormous. It is, yes. No, we've worked yeah. really hard and but the number would be a lot higher than that. But unfortunately, we've been delayed a little bit for the same reasons everyone else has. Uh, we'd have done 10 this year and, and, and we haven't been able to get quite that far. So. I, I think it's uh, you, you mentioned that um, the constellation system for creating a, a venue uh, with the stage. Is this design principle the same for voice lift uh, for, for business or education or is there, it's variating? We have very different design rules for voice lift uh, systems than we do for concert halls uh, because the voice lift systems need to be a much higher density. Uh, the difference for, between voice lift systems for education and business, there are no differences. They're exactly the same. But with the, the main thing to keep in mind is that for voice lift uh, to work, we have a lot of rules that we have to obey that are a little bit more relaxed in the regular performing arts center world well i, I, I know a little about that <laughs> i tried it i'm sure you do <laughs> so well but but as john mentioned i come from the danish company called stormberg we've been the past 10 years been uh, working on av sound light and today we do most our works in theaters and shows and museums where it also all started for us 20 years ago. We also do a lot of large scale integration and integration in many forms, everything from hospitals to education and venues and board meeting rooms. And we do uh, a lot of consultancy work and a lot of, uh, for instance, we've done Eurek in Shanghai and we've done museums and sports um, arenas. So it's, it's a very variating and very um, different kinds of environment we're working in. The first constellation system we actually were part of was taking place some in Denmark in Jyske Bank. And we were contacted by Jyske Bank that was on the, the way to produce this wonderful uh, board and meeting room. And they had this long table in the middle where they want to seat 22 people and they have a presentation area in the front and relaxed sofas around in, in, on the side where they want to be able to sit and do group discussions. So we have a long talk about how could we actually support this? Would it be possible to have microphones on the table? Would it be possible? And they want a clear table and they want to be able to do capture the sound and, and present it for video screen and video things. And that was back in 2012. So we looked a lot of different places and I've been in 2010, I was in Berkeley and experienced Pearson Theatre at the factory. I can really recommend when Corona is, is shifting to, to go there and experience that. That was really wonderful. And with that in mind, we, we, we sat down with uh, Stein, who was uh, the principal at the uh, AV department that time and had a chat about how could Constellation work with this. And we figure out to implant Constellation and for enhancing the speech intelligibility on the table. And 
John, is it correct that this was the first constellation system actually outside, voice lift constellation system outside the US? I think it was, yes. Yeah, I think, I think so. Been. And this is another really, really fine project John and I did together in um, Karolinska in Sweden, uh, which is a university. This round room here was particularly difficult because it, when you have a round room, you also have a focus point in the middle, which is um, a focus point for when all the acoustic energy meet in the middle. And that's, uh, unfortunately, is also the place where the presenter will stand and, and talk. So, uh, yeah, exactly. You remember that, don't you, John? I do indeed. Yes. Yeah. So, but, but the funny thing is, without the constellation system turned on, so when you turn it off, it was impossible to stand and hold a lecture in the middle and, and present anything because the energy and the thing bouncing back, back and forward, it was really more or less impossible. But when you turn on the constellation system, it was actually quite easy to understand what's happening in the middle. And you certainly suddenly get all the information back. And it was like the constellation system in some magical ways, transparent everything and make it go away. So do you remember what was behind that, John, and what happened? What happens when you switch on constellation in a room like this with flutter echoes? And the same thing happens in concert halls as well is that because Constellation has lots of source loudspeakers distributed around the space, you actually fill in the gaps. So flutter echoes are very, very present in super dry, large rooms. And this room is very dry in accordance with our requirements for a voice lift. But the problem with round, dry rooms is that you're gonna get focus points, you can't avoid it. But when you switch on the Constellation system, it fills in all the gaps. So those standing waves become far less apparent. Of course, they're still there, but you don't hear them. And the same is true in concert halls when you turn the constellation system on, that those standing waves disappear. Yeah, that, that's, I mean, we really felt it when we were turning on and off that system. So I, the users up there were really happy to use that room because of, they now have the ability to actually talk in the room instead of having microphones plastered to their bodies. Um, the other room we did at Kaolinska University more or less looked like a, a social distance room for Corona, but it was actually not, a, it was before that. It's an exam room where the idea is that you have more than 500 people for an exam and you're able to, with a press of a button, address them all at once throughout the voice lift system and the ability to change the acoustics to fit the students. So they are sitting in a six hours exam in a nice, comfortable environment so they will perform their best. Another uh, thing with this room is that that room is actually possible to roll in partitioning walls and create small auditoriums inside that. And with the press of a button again, you can change that with uh, the constellation system. Right now, we're building this very fine constellation system in Aarhus at the architectural school in Aarhus. And if you carefully look at this picture here, you would see that there are some green small dots there, which is actually tennis balls that have been put on top of the bracket. So every time you see a little green dot here, that's actually where they're going to be either a microphone or a speaker in that room. Um, so just pointing that out. While, while that is being done over there and we're pulling all the cables there, we're building the racks uh, in uh, in our warehouse in, in, and in our tool shop um, back at our little local factory. And actually that's been tested together with Maya Sound, So they're able to make sure that everything we've done will be precisely uh, looked after. And that's one of the things that while you were talking about, John, the importance of what Constellation is, I think the overall uh, headline for Constellation is that it's a complete package. From the very first time you talk about Constellation to the very time you have a turnkey solution, you are being taken by your hand and been hold on that hand and been followed through in every steps. And I think that's one, I mean, for, for choosing Constellation for the products we're working on, for us, there are two very, very important reasons for doing that. One, it's a complete package that whenever we in need of help and whenever the project is in need of help in order to create the best possible solution, we have someone to go to. There is always an answer. And the second thing is, as you pointed out, the early decay time, it's actually possible to create these rooms. It's not just something 
that's imaginary. But the biggest project we, we ever came across was this here, which is Copenhagen University's extension um, called the Mass Tower. The Mass Tower was a project that was funded by the, of course, the government here in Denmark, but also by the Mass Foundation and because of that the name. So the whole building here has education in the button, auditoriums, and each floor in the tower represents a research department in diseases. Right now, they, um, they moved a little around, so they are actually researching the flaws in uh, COVID-19, but that's just wonderful. So hopefully we'll see some result there soon. We were appointed first as consultant for this project. And second of all, we were the integrator uh, of creating all these marvelous spaces and beautiful rooms across the whole new uh, extension. We got two years in preparation and we started in 2014 and doing that preparation. And we went around the world to look at different kinds of venues meeting different kind of manufacturers, looking at universities, what they were done. And we came across a very interesting uh, concept in Massachusetts called uh, TEAL that was developed by MIT. The idea here is that you have a round table and you have a group of students around that table. And those students are able to present to the other students why with screens around in the outer circle of the room so everyone can see and participate and you can share your group work on those screens and have discussion about it. That was one of the reasons why the Constellation idea was born into this project. And we created this wonderful uh, auditorium here with Constellation and that was built. So you see the inspiration from the TEAL and the MIT principles were implanted into these auditoriums. And because they were able to, as John explained, have these acoustic focus points around a table where you get large intelligibility, you were actually able to enhance the group experience and enhance the concentration area around a table like this. And that was really one of the key elements to choosing Constellation in, in that particular auditorium. Working with the Mass Foundation and working with this project really was uh, satisfying. One of the reasons, of course, was to trying and, and working with Constellation, but also because every time we saw new development in, for instance, a video system or a new sound system, we were able to move in that direction and change what we have specified. Um, which in practice meant that every third month we were looking and at all the solutions we'd chosen, if there were coming new development, if there would be new improvement, which resulted in that we changed the video systems actually three times during a two years period. For the university, there were also other key elements in these areas. One, of course, was being able to connect this auditorium we see a picture of here with the large one and another auditorium. So all three auditoriums in the base level were able to connect those and create a more or less like a 2,000 people conference area where people couldn't talk across each room. And with the help from Constellation, that was also possible. Back in 2014, no one has never thought about COVID-19, but I can tell you that they are now they are really, really happy that one of their key elements for this building was distant learning and that Constellation can contribute to the sound for distant learning. Because when COVID-19 came to Denmark in March and everything was shifted to doing this, working from home or doing distant learning, everyone was really happy. So the professor came into the art times, the student was home sitting watching. It was actually a better sound quality from those rooms. So they went into that um, and put the masks on, went in there and did the lecture and then got back to home. Another very important thing and one of the reasons why choosing the constellation system was because they want to enhance the communication between the professor and the students. So the ones doing the lectures, especially some of the old auditoriums that are quite big, they had problems with having a good communication between the professor and students. It's like the distance was too long. So they wanted a way to try to see if they could avoid that distance and see if that distance could be made shorter. And there was no doubt that one of the things, of course, was trying to create an auditorium that didn't have a long depth and also that you don't have to pass on a microphone every time you need to ask a question. 
and we all do that possibilities with the technology that comes from Constellation. Another very important point for the university was that we had a lot of focus on green technology. And it's quite surprising. I don't know actually if I ever told you this, John, but we did a calculation of the tree constellation system here at the Mass Tower and compared them to calculations with PA systems that would normally go in a room like this. And the power consumptions for the constellation system is equal to the PA system. Right. And, and, and that was quite surprising for me when I did measurements over a year for both systems. And we could see that if you were using comparable PA system, they would have, have used the same amount of power. Especially the, the in quiescent mode, when, when no one's talking on the system and, and the, there's no rock band going on, you know, it's, it, it uses very little power. I think the cooling fans are probably the thing that uses most power. It's, it really doesn't use a lot at all. In the rest of the house, we have installed uh, digital signage, uh, meeting rooms across the whole campus, education rooms and conference rooms. So in fact, it's a very large project. As I said, there are three constellation auditoriums in the, the base of this building. This one is called Nilsina Nilsson, um, and it's a beautiful auditorium that actually has a little of the same problem before we installed the constellation system as we uh, experienced it at Kaolinska with the focus point because of the round furnitures inside. But when you switch on the constellation system, it's just magically disappeared, as you were telling about. Constellation helps a lot in intelligibility and in the thing that people are able to stand and talk freely without use of body-worn microphones. In here, we have 65 speakers and 30 microphones, and everything's controlled from a touchscreen. We, we already briefly touched base on this sort of term here, and in here, we also have uh, 70 speakers and 30 microphones. And of course, the voice lift part with presenting the voice is very important, but the focus acoustics in this room is very important. And we actually installed a laser diode in the signal. You can turn on and place the tables according to those laser diodes. <laughs> so you actually know that these tables are placed correctly for optimization with the constellation system. This is a big auditorium. Probably think it may still be one of the biggest voice lift systems that's been done so far. It is, and, it is yeah. the biggest, yeah. And as you said, John, the reparation time of a room like this needs to be around 0.4 or, or equivalent to that. You shouldn't be a rocket science to, to actually figure out that there's glass all the way around, which in many ways isn't that ideally. There are many ways because it's not ideally. Of course, the acoustic parts uh, is obvious. But second, it turned out that all the professors want the curtains shut because it's annoying when people are looking inside while you're doing a lecture. What happens is that during a lecture, the curtains are closed. If we didn't close the curtain, we would actually have a delay of 80 milliseconds from the glass to the microphones, which of course wouldn't be ideally for doing this. In here, we have 135 speakers and 100 microphones. And here's another view. So we've been working a lot with the architects on the sidelines in order to get the best sidelines, but also the steelness of the terracing has a reason because we wanted the chairs to be higher. So every time that hits a sound, it will hit into something that were absorbent on the chairs. Everything in those other terms are controlled from this lecture table and where you were able to connect, of course, your computer, digitizer in the middle where you can draw on and a document camera. And you have a touch screen where you can control everything from. And you can see it's the idea is that you're able to control the constellation system here with a presentation or Q&A or drag and drop the video sources down where you want. So everything should be able to be controlled from the main page here. We also have a, an in-deep control settings where we can choose a little more. And we're actually able to do a very simplified version of uh, reparation in here. And we've done that together, John, with, uh, with, with lots of success, I think. Of course, everything needs to be tied up in a rack room. And this is the racks that are for the constellation part in the video part in the large auditorium called Ms. 
Kiliana. And, and as I'm going to interrupt you to say yeah. that all of us in Maya Sound have never seen wiring of that standard. Your company does the very, very best installation work. It's just amazing. I like to refer to, to the technical people here at our company as the dream team because they are one of a kind. I mean, I haven't seen that either. That, that was one of the goals we set when we started this company many years ago, that we wanted to stand out in terms of technical level, that we want to be on that level. Um, it takes years. But we, we prepared all this and we were planning all this over a period of six months. And we, uh, Sean and I literally lived in this office for six months, creating system proposal, rack drawings, rack layouts, system diagrams, all kinds of schemes and documents to support the installation and being able to have corresponding with engineers so we could look into how cooling was done in the auditoriums and all the other places we were working with uh, AV and sound. We were very, very keen on picking the right chairs together with the architects and the foundation and the university, both of course in terms of acoustics, but very much also in terms of sidelines. So we get the best sidelines, so everyone still feel that they're close according to what the, the wishes from the university was, but also in order to being able to feel that you're close to the screen and can read everything clearly and easily. The noise problem in a room like this or the noise in a building like this, of course, there is when you have 500 students with laptops, there is a lot of noise going on. So it was really important that the only noise that was, was the one created by the students and not the cooling system or the PI sensors. We set up very harsh criteria of NR20 in that room as a target. And honestly, we didn't, re we didn't reach that, but we, we reached something over time that was close to NR25. And one of the things we've been chasing was side tones and pilot tones from a central control system of the building and from PR sensors. We actually found that, that some of the PR sensors had a really, really harsh 10 kilohertz tone that was quite annoying for the system and made the constellation system behave in, in a way that was definitely not wanted. In order to get the architects to understand that a constellation system is not something that ruined the architecture, we created these renderings, showing them that we put in all these small speakers and we're putting in all these vertical lines which represent a microphone in real size in this rendering. That was actually a really helpful tool in order to get the architects to understand what the vision was about the system and how it potentially could look. We also, of course, put in projectors and, and light fixtures and all that and chairs that more or less looked like as it was intended to be. In order to make sure that everything we've done was done correctly, we created a lot of mock-ups. This is a mock-up of placement of speakers and projectors in the ceiling. We also could test the acoustics here with that little uh, model. And we could see that while doing this mock-up, we wouldn't be able to service the MM4s correctly and, and unscrew the screws. So we needed to, we need to move them a little. So it was not only necessary for the improvement from the architects, but it was also really important for us to see how we could service the product and show the university that. And then everything got done in concrete and we started building the whole thing up. We had a really, really difficult task in placing all the points for all the microphones and all the speakers here. It's, it's a little complicated to explain, but as you may see here on this drawing, all the placement with the red dots, that is microphones and speakers, placed according to where people are sitting. In the ceiling, you may see that all the lines of the suspended ceiling here is going on a complete different direction than the chairs are pointing. And above that, we had a concrete ceiling that went completely different, which means that placing microphones and placing speakers there was a layer on top with concrete. There was a layer with a suspended ceiling and then everything needs to be laid out so it was matching the chairs and all the places where people were sitting. So we used laser techniques to set everything up and point everything out. And it was really, really difficult. 
So why was it important? I mean, why didn't we just put them up with in in say okay within a five centimeters of distance? It probably works. We we learned from Yushke Bank um, especially that whenever you have four speakers in each corner and you have a microphone in the middle, the distance from that microphone to each corner is more or less the key for the constellation system to work, which means that if those four distances are equal or as close as equal as they can get, the system will perform and behave much better. So I'm, I'm a little proud to say that our dream team of technicians, they were able to actually reach that point within two to three millimeters. And I remember a milestone technician that was coming and checking everything we'd done. He was like, he didn't believe his measurement tool. He thought there was something wrong with it. But if we, we've seen the precision of placing all this has been really, really important. When you have all these microphones and you have all these speakers, there's of course a little cables. For those three order terms, we actually pulled more than 20 kilometers of cables, which is quite substantial. That of course also meant that having a very, very close relation to the electrician engineers. So we were ensuring that the respect distance to uh, power cables and respect distance to other cables like fire alarms and et cetera, was very important. Uh, that six months of planning was a big part of that, of course. As I mentioned, it, it was really, really hard to place everything in the ceiling. And maybe you get a little sense of that on the left side. So. Um, one of our technicians came up with this very, very clever idea to have more or less like a U-bracket where we could slice and put the thing in so we could turn that bracket all the ways we wanted. And with that, we could place the speakers and the microphones within one to two millimeters tolerance. And that was mainly the key. Uh, so after being very careful placing the point in the ceiling, making the pipe go down, and we were able to put that bracket underneath and then precisely measure everything out at last. All these things were done with cabling and putting points out in the ceiling. At home at our tool shop, they were creating these racks, which John pointed out, and we were creating them off-site, testing them, making sure that everything worked as possible. And I think it was two years after we were starting, and one and a half year after we were starting, we were actually done with the installation and ready for you guys from my sound to come and and prove everything was right so here's the dream team and the cake they got because we they were so uh, wonderful and actually it was a milestone for us to uh, to have installed all the things in there so creating an auditorium like this especially the big one also meaning that we need to develop special development so for instance when we realized after a while we have we have these microphones in the front desk of the auditorium and when people were sitting typing on their laptops on the table in front of them on the, on the first row you could hear that little sound coming out of the speakers like and we we figured out a way to avoid this was to create a special rubber thing around the microphone and place that inside this that almost looked like a tank with a little cannon on. And we placed that in front of the desk mic and that little sound disappeared. We also took a lot of time to develop together with my sound T booms because we, we could easily just to put down a boom and a boom for each microphone. But the architect has a desire to minimize the booms that comes down from the ceiling. So we tried to develop the right T boom where the cable was running inside, but also with the right distance between the, the, the capsule of the microphones. Uh, also when we angled them that the right capsule has the right. So we did a lot of development with the vendors of the microphones and my sound together with them. Another special thing we've done uh, is this thing here, which was behind each projection screen, there was an acoustic absorber. So the projection screen was a macro pair for uh, thing, as you probably know or have seen in, in cinemas where the air and sound can go through. So having that in front of this thing here meant that we could create a two layer absorber behind the pair for screen. So we created a two layer absorber. The first layer was a membrane absorber taking the frequencies from 60 to 90 Hertz 
and reduced them a lot. And the second was a purse absorber that was uh, meant to absorb sound from around 500 hertz of above. So having that two layer and a lot of square meters to absorb behind, and we had that area was dead anyway. No one, no architect could use it. No one could use it. So we could just easily use it to create a absorber. We actually done the same thing now in, uh, in the constellation system we're working on in Aarhus. And uh, we developed it even further and make it more significant uh, how it really works. The noise from things inside this auditorium was really an important issue. Imagine having close to 100 microphones picking up on sound. Everything needs to be as quiet as possible. So we came up with this idea for the projectors. First, we were looking at, would it be possible to put a video wall where we just had these projection screens? Could we put a video wall instead there? And we couldn't use them for acoustics if we were putting them up. If we were putting projection screens up, we need to have projectors that were noisy. The projectors need some kind of distance in order to, sh to shoot on those. So in 2014, when we planned this, we short throw projectors was not able to create that large of, of an area. That was more or less in, in, at that time period when lenses came out that could that, do that. So we, together with Panasonic, had this projector that could be able to do a five and a half meters wide screen with a two meters distance from the screen. But there was microphones pretty close to it. So the noise from those projectors was too much. So we came up with this idea that when the sound is coming out of the projector, it's hitting an angle surface with an absorber on. Then that sound that isn't captured from that first hit will reflect up and hit the second uh, angle and being damped again onto an absorber. And what's not being damped in here will go out. So we were actually, depending on where we were meshing, we were meshing in front of the, uh, of the noise cancellation thing or on the side or the back, we reached between minus 12 to minus 15 dBs of damping, which helped and was significant. And the cool thing about this, this is just a steel plate with an absorber inside, bended in the right direction. So it's actually quite cheap to produce. The system is working every day and it's actually in use for eight hours a day with voice lift and Q&A mainly. But both John and I has experienced that you can use it for everything from a string quartet as the picture shows to jazz concert and, uh, and operas. John, that was more or less what I had intended to show you today. Oh, thank you, Anders. It's great that all of these uh, voice lift systems, we always set up in a way that they've got music settings because people actually like them. I also remember uh, Steen at Yiski Bank telling me that um, the local uh, choir had hijacked their boardroom <laughs> at the headquarters because they loved singing in, in a reverberant acoustic. And I thought that was very nice to, to hear that. So, yeah. Thank it you is. so much for telling us about this story. And I cannot speak more highly of, of the, the standard of work that you guys have done on this. And uh, I certainly hope there'll be plenty more. Looking forward to the architectural school for sure. I would like to begin by thanking today's guest appearance, guest lecture, um, Anders Jurgensen, Stauberg's uh, project director. Thank you very much uh, for taking us on a super exciting journey where, uh, where we see a great use of uh, constellation. I would also like to thank today's host, John Pello, uh, Meyerson's project director for constellation. Thank you, John. We have come to an end. Please be sure to tune in uh, one week from now where we'll have the second episode about constellation. And that means that with always, uh, happy to say, uh, please stay safe, uh, please stay healthy, and best to you and your loved ones.